Hey everybody, welcome back to another Motivation Monday podcast for Monday, February 18th, 2019. Hope you had a great weekend and uh, hopefully we can give you some inspiring words that will get you off on the right foot with your practicing and playing and music making this week. So last week I told you I was going to take some of my favorite quotes from some of my favorite interviews with some of my favorite jazz musicians and lay them on you and start a discussion with that kind of stuff. And I was fully prepared to do that. And then I went to a clinic with the great saxophonist Jerry Berganzi this past Friday down at the Boston Sax Shop. And he laid a really, really important uh, memory that he had on the room. And I thought that it would be a perfect discussion that goes back to what we have been talking about over some of the past weeks. So it's kind of like something from an interview, but it's actually something that I experienced just a couple of days ago that made a big impression on me. So he was talking about practicing and he was talking about practicing chromaticism in particular. Somebody in the room had asked him a question about like how to sound really good using chromaticism. Now this made Jerry Berganzi think about a time when Coltrane came to Boston and him and a bunch of his friends, they hopped on the train and they went to uh, the venue where Coltrane was hanging out that day to listen to him practice. And First of all, I just think that's like the coolest thing in the world, you know, coming from a generation where we never had a chance to do anything like that. Just hearing that like, oh, man, you could actually go and listen to John Coltrane practice. That's just gives me goosebumps anyways. But they went down there and they were checking out what Train was practicing. And he said that Train was all day, literally all all day he was just practicing bebop scales the range of his horn and the way that jerry put it like he didn't practice anything else for that entire you know six seven eight hour period that was it and that really struck me because you'll remember a couple weeks ago we talked about the fact that the difference between like an okay musician and a really great musician is the ability to subject yourself to hours and hours and hours of doing the exact same thing. So this kind of made me think, it's like you need to get obsessed with one sound for a little while. You can't be jumping around to all these different concepts but not fully absorbing any of them. You need to be like Coltrane. You maybe need to just play a bunch of bebop scales for an entire week, like three, four hours a day. And then it will really, really start to make its way into your playing as opposed to kind of maybe sort of getting something into your playing, but not really fully integrating it to the point where you can actually say something with what you're practicing. So I'm willing to bet, let's say that Coltrane did this eight hours a day for a month. At the end of that month, I mean, he had mastered the bebop scale and he was able to fully integrate it into his playing to the point where he could play over super fast tempos, take some turns and twists that nobody else that didn't put in that amount of time can do. And that's really what made Coltrane this super amazing musician that we all love to listen to so much and made him seem almost kind of supernatural in the way that he could play the saxophone and the way that he could deal with chord changes and play over those insanely fast tempos. The things that we're all really, really amazed by and sometimes kind of stupefied by I think all goes back to he was just willing to work on it harder than anybody else. And you could kind of see the gleam in in Jerry Berganzi's eye when he was talking about that. Like that made him really excited to talk about the fact that, yeah, Coltrane took six hours and he just practiced this one thing over and over and over again. And I'm sure that that made a huge impression on Jerry and anybody else that was with him or anybody else that got the amazing opportunity to listen to somebody like Coltrane just actually practice, listen to him in the shed, and really get that source material of what one of the best jazz musicians in history would work on in his sessions. 
But that, I don't know, that made a huge impression on me, even though it was secondhand coming from Jerry. And uh, makes me think, makes me think, I think I should work on less, but do more with it. And I know I'm like a broken record. I just keep hammering this topic, but it's so important. And I just keep getting these anecdotes and finding little things here and there from my favorite musicians that just kind of reinforce this thought that I've been kind of uh, relaying to you over the past month or so. So take what you will from that. Also, man, check out Jerry Berganzi playing the saxophone. I mean, still just one of the giants of the music and getting to hang out in a room with him for a couple of hours was, was absolutely amazing. Uh, if you're not aware of who he is, my friends always make fun of me because I, I always bring up Jerry Berganzi and they get sick of it after a while. But I truly think he's one of the, the greatest jazz educators and greatest jazz musicians who's ever lived. So I'll link to a couple of things in the show notes by Jerry uh, so you can check him out. And if you ever get a chance to be in the same room as him or go and hear him play, highly recommended. So let me know what you think. Last week, we had a great discussion about last week's Motivation Monday uh, in our 10-Minute Jazz Lesson community Facebook group. So if you're not a member, hop on over there, get in on it, and let's talk about this week's episode. Love having discussions on these topics because I'm sure that many of you have had very similar experiences at clinics or you know, being in the presence of great musicians like I uh, had the good fortune of having last Friday. So let's talk about it. All right, everybody, have a great and inspired week. Consider limiting your practice options this week, but spending more time on whatever you are working on. Okay, we'll talk to you on Friday with a regular episode. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.